Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I support my tomatoes when they get really, really large. Okay, because I have to make sure that I can get airflow in there so that we don't get a um, mildew or tomato blight. And another thing I want to tell you about the tomatoes is um, I'm going to show you how I pollinate them. Now, you, there are a lot of different ways you can pollinate your tomatoes, but I'm going to show you what works for me and I'm going to show you some previous harvest and yeah, and, and let you see that I usually harvest a whole lot of tomatoes. Also, in the previous video, I shared with you guys that um, I didn't have enough room here in my container garden, so I had to transplant some of the peppers later as I harvested the uh, cool weather crops like, you know, uh, spinach, for example. And then I, when I cleared that out, then I was able to pick up those plants in a very large amount of soil block and and transplant them. And I think I'm going to share you, with you um, my lettuce harvest. My son called me and said, hey mom, give me some lettuce. I'll be over there in a few minutes. Okay, so let's get started. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears the Son of God disclosed Okay Brian, you want to tell our subscribers what we just did this morning okay yes i do okay what do you want them to know we noticed that the, the plants are touching the brick wall that's okay so we have to move the okay plants. so you said the uh, tomato plants were touching the brick wall yeah why was that a problem because it will burn the plants up because the bricks hold heat right and it's soon going to be 100 degrees here in Texas, right? Mm -hmm. So what did we do to help that? Well, me and Big Mama. Moved, Big Mama and I? Big Mama and I moved the plant, these uh, tomato plants to out. out the beds. The tomato plant beds out a little. So right. They won't get burned up from the bricks. Right. So, because the bricks hold heat. And I, was, I noticed that they were wilting a little bit in the back more so than the front and it's very early in the morning it's like uh 9 30 in the morning and so yeah we moved the beds out a little bit brian started and i helped him so now we got plenty of uh room behind the bed so that the branches don't have to necessarily touch the brick wall and you will get more air circulation now, I noticed something about one of the plants. Do you remember what it was? It was right here. Can you tell me what I told you this is? Go ahead and close and um, point to it. There's, Move the leaves out the way so that people can see it. There was a horn worm. Yeah. That, um, you see, guys, see where he's touching all those little branches that are eaten off? Right? So go ahead. And I told you it was probably what? A horn worm. Yeah, because they will attack a tomato plant. They love tomato plants and peppers. So I'm going to come out here tonight with my ultraviolet uh, black light. And it will sh uh, illuminate in the dark. If I can remember to do that, I'll try to capture it on film. And it may not be a hornworm. It could be another type of worm. But... It ate the, all of those branches off, so I'm, I'm suspecting a hornworm. And you also can look down and see if you see any little black little uh, poop that they excrete. And I want to share with you something else I did, which was yesterday. Show them this here, Brian. See this twine? Show them where it starts. Right, right there. there. Mm-hmm. And I tied it and then I came. I'm going too fast. And I tied up the this twine and I uh-huh. And then it goes to here. And now I'm getting ready to tie these up with a little bit more twine. You wanna go get it for me? 
right under there. So you're gonna start here where I left off. Why don't you film me and I do it? I'm gonna put, secure this branch right here. I'm gonna tie it loose and put a, a double knot. See that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna extend it all the way to here. You getting that? And it's loose. I'm doing another little knot right here. And then we're going to give me another piece of string. And I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to secure this branch to the cage. You see that right there, that branch to this cage loosely because they can grow thicker. You want to make sure that you have some room so the the branches are not cutting. And then I'm going to come around here and I'm going to secure this branch. You got it where my finger is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to secure that branch to the cage. Tie a knot and that's it. Keeping it loose to give it room to move around and, and grow. Now yesterday these branches were hanging all on the ground. So that's why I started securing them. And now we're getting ready to give it some extra enforcement. We're going to put this string. You're going to go over here. And you're going to tie it about right here down because we're going we're gonna to secure the bottom. You can drop the string and just tie it on the second circle. And you're securing the branch. Where's the branch that you're securing to? No, you're just tying something. I want you to get a branch right, right here. Very good. Tie a loose knot twice. I come down here and we're going to secure the bottom branches. Now, every so often, you're going to come behind one of these. Put the string. No, 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 no. Let me show you. Down here, you're just going to go behind it. You see that? Mm -hmm. Pull go down go behind it go behind it and bring it all the way over go behind. there you go you got oh, look, look watch what you're doing pull it taunt but not too tight go down lower you're gonna put one right here go behind it Pull it, go behind the cage, behind the plant. Brian, look at all this. You've got to pull it without tearing up leaves. I'm going to take this one and put it above. Now, see all this slack in here? That's not helping anything. Thank you. Don't break it. Now you're going to go to the last cage and secure it at the bottom. At the bottom. That's the second one. You got to go to the last circle. Okay, now give me the twine. Now you're going to have to go get scissors. I'm pulling in a little bit taunter. You're gonna cut that off about right here. And you're gonna go behind there to all the way over here. Even if you have to step into the wheelbarrow. Please look at the branches and make sure you're not slicing the branches. I can't see what you're doing, so I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. You're gonna tie it at the bottom, then you're gonna move out the way and let me look at it. Very good. Excellent. So now, if you look real close, you can see the branches are shaking. 
You see them moving in the breeze? Yeah. So they're getting wind from the back as well as the side and the front. This also, Brian, encourages pollination. <coughs> Tomatoes don't need to have insects to pollinate them, but they can. But if they get enough breeze, as we do in North Texas, they will pollinate and put on these flowers as long as it, the temperature isn't above 85, 90 degrees. But even if you, I mean, this is a little pearl from Lady Cheryl. If you see your tomatoes are not producing enough, enough blooms, make sure that you're not giving it too much nitrogen. <coughs> and you can also come in here and just shake them a little bit. You want to do that for me? I did this side over here. So let's, let's get you to shake these. And guys, if you'll notice... He's only grabbing two of the stakes and all of it is moving. And that is because I secured them all together. There is strength in numbers. So let's go down here and shake those. Very good. Good. I'm glad you noticed that one wasn't shaking that much. And look right here. We have tomatoes. Right Pull it back so the subscribers can see it. Don't be rough with it. Okay. Next nice tomato. And there are others. But what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm getting ready to get my chair right over there. And I'm going to sit it right here. And I'm going to take scissors and I'm cutting all these bottom leaves off so that we can get more air in there. I want to show you what I'm starting with. And then after I clean it up, I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, so now you can see that it looks much better. Another thing that I did while I was here, I deadheaded the spent marigolds, as you can see here. So I'm going to put that one, and those are the branches that I cut off. I'm going to put these seeds right here. I'll pick them up later. Let me go in closer so you can see them. I have a handful here. And I'm going to just take my finger and rough this soil up a little bit in here. And I'm going to sprinkle some of these seeds. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to rough the soil up just a little bit. Sprinkle a few marigold seeds and cover them up and I really hope you can see that I'm gonna come right here and put some seeds down here and that way when I water this in here those seeds will get watered I also observed another area. I think we showed you this area that was eaten up. And here's another area. So there is definitely some type of worm in here. I'm going to find it. And when I do, I'll show it to you. So this is bed number one finished. And now I'm going to do bed number two and bed number three. I'm getting all those low hanging leaves off so we can get air in here okay i'll be back guys we're all done looking good and we're taking all of these leaves and it's a lot and we put them here into this container it's a lot i just squished them squished them down and i have drainage holes at the bottom of this container it's a 17 gallon and we're gonna put compost and old potting mix inside of here. And we're gonna put four okra plants that I started from seeds and I'll show those to you. Look at this butter crunch lettuce. Isn't it beautiful guys? I harvested right out of this bed right here. And my son called me and wanted some as you can see. It's beautiful. And uh, yeah, harvested some lettuce for my son. We have more lettuce. Let's 
see, over here, right there in the front, we have lettuce over here as well. Okay, so it's going to start bolting real soon. I'm getting the bad pieces out. It's going to bolt real soon because once we reach 100 degrees, the lettuce will bolt and get bitter. So before that happens, I'm going to be sharing it. In this part of the video, I'm going to share with you what I promised I would do a few weeks ago, show you how I move peppers. Okay, here you go, look. You got that hole right there? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna show them where I'm gonna drop this in that hole. See that pepper plant? Mm -hmm. Guys, make sure you get all the air pockets out of there. You don't wanna have root rot. You can move your pepper plants, tomato plants, providing you don't disturb those roots. And then we're gonna push this up. I'm gonna take off these little bottle peppers because I don't need it. Uh, branches because I don't need that. Got it in there nice and tight. Really good. And we're going to put one more right here. Here's a nice little marigold. You see it? I'm just picking it up. Taking my finger, putting it down. It will grow. Okay, you got the hole down here? Mm -hmm. Nice little hole. And you see I got the plant. I'm just moving it around a little bit. Putting it down in the hole. Push down. Uh, this might be blood or some weeds. Let me just take it out. Put that out. Pushing it down. Covering it up. And those bottom branches are a little yellow, but I think it needs more nutrition. So water it with uh, country tea. Now, pan down here to these flowers, please. Now, you see these flowers, guys? They're kind of heavy, and they're kind of bending this uh, grow box and tearing it. So we're going to take this out, and we're going to move it. Okay, guys, so we put it right there so it won't be damaging the other grow box so much. I'm going to pan over here. See if I can push it in a little bit. It's a little better. So we have two pepper plants in this grow box. We have two in this grow box, one here and one here. We have two over here and two, and we're gonna have to put in some dirt. See these toes where we took it out? We're gonna put in some soil there. So everywhere that we remove a plant, a pepper plant, I added soil to fill in the hole. The key to moving pepper plants is you've got to dig a deep uh, amount of soil out. See like right here, it's a big spot missing here, and there was one over here and one over here. Now what I'm going to do now is, you see these companion plants, the marigolds? It's wonderful for these two, but I know that that hornworm likes to eat on pepper plants. So I'm removing a dead flower and I'm sprinkling some seeds all along here. I'm gonna put one here and some here. And as they come up, I will move them. Marigolds are one of the easiest flowers to grow and to move when they're young. So I'm going to find another old flower right there. You see it just pulled right on out. And I'm going to... Move the soil back a little bit here. I'm gonna sprinkle some seeds. And I guess I'll sprinkle some right here. And right here where this purse lane is. And I'm just gonna cover it up. And I'm going to cover it up here. If you haven't guessed all right, ready, 
I love to get my hands in the dirt. It takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> Making sand mud pies and dirt mud pies. But I rest assured, when I'm working on products, I wear a hairnet and I wear gloves. Now over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a few more seeds See how I pull that out. I'm gonna sprinkle a few more right here, right there, and right there. Because the wonderful thing about marigolds is they deter a lot of insects and they will bloom all spring, summer, and fall and early winter in North Texas until we reach a freezing temperature of 32 degrees or lower. Okay, so the ground is real moist. The soil is moist. I'm not gonna have to rewater these again until tomorrow. Okay, so that's it. We have one pepper plant here, one here, here and here. And you can see where I top these peppers off. You can see that they're bushing out already where they were topped off. Okay. And over here, I already did the same thing with the marigolds. I have two plants here. And look at here, guys. I topped this plant. It has a pepper on it now. I topped this plant. It's two peppers. Actually, it's three. I topped this off a few days ago. It's growing real, real fast. Okay. Now I have one more pepper plant to move. I'll show you where it is. In this, I think it's a four gallon or five gallon pot. You can really see how these have pushed out since I topped them. A lot of branches right there. So this is, pot is too small. So I'm gonna move one of them into another pot that I brought back from my food forest at my investment property. Okay, so I'm over here and I'm just scooping up a really big piece. And I can't get it all out, so I'm gonna take the rake. I don't know if I have to go back upstairs and get the shovel. And I'm just gonna lift it up. Are you getting it? It's almost out. Okay, there we go. Okay, can you see it? You got mm -hmm. the roots and all? Mm -hmm. Now we're putting it right down here, and then we're gonna top it off with soil all around the bottom. In fact, I'm gonna move it over a little bit so it can have a little bit more soil. That okay, off? so we added more soil. You're getting it down here so they can see the soil line. Mm -hmm. We added two big shovels full of soil and we raised the soil level up. And now we're gonna push down and then we're gonna fill soil all the way around it. And we'll come back when we're done. Okay, so we got it in there really good. We make sure in the air pockets. I'm gonna pull all these little leaves that will turn into branches so that we won't get any soil-borne funguses or diseases. So I took all the leaves off down there. Okay, very good. So we'll put this in the compost and we'll water this in real well. So right in here, Brian, you see the hole that's missing where we took the plant out? Mm -hmm. We have to replace some soil. So over here is where we have our compost and we're gonna shovel some soil right here. It's early Sunday morning, the next day, and I want to show you that the pepper plants seem to be adjusting well from where I moved one out of here and put it in here. And again, I want to remind you that topping the peppers will make them get bushier and sturdier and produce more fruit, okay? And you can always check out my playlist for tomatoes and peppers. And uh, I also will link the video where I top them this year. Bria and I are getting this order ready so that we can ship it. And we always take pride in our orders. Right, Bria? Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.